Did, it do an, uh, did they do a, an MRI, a CAT scan? No, that was not offered. Mm -hmm. um, I was offered to go into a study, but um, never heard anything about it. Mm -hmm. Not much. I asked my last Botox shot. I asked them, do, um, what's new coming down the pike? Any new studies, anything coming out? And I was thinking there'd be a whole array of things the doctor might think about. And the only thing he said was, mm -hmm. they're trying to work out a new, la longer lasting Botox. Do you recognize the voice that you came in with? Yes. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I've had nine Botox shots. The first one worked successfully. The okay. Now, when you use the C-spot and jiggle, try it. See what happens to your voice. Uh, you hear a different voice? Yes. What do we, what do we have? We have the tape. All right, we're going to the Sally Show. Let's take a listen to a young lady who had the problem, and you can listen to Sally. We're going to have Jimmy James return uh, in, in a few minutes. But first, our next guest defied all the odds. She says for 34 years she didn't have a voice. And she's been working with this gentleman, Dr. Cooper, for about four weeks and now really can talk again. Uh, Sylvia, you're going to talk, but you're going to talk the way you mm. talked for 34 years. I think it's important that we hear the difference. What happened? You were 18, and what happened? Well, I was 18 years old, and uh, I had a tonsillectomy. And after the tonsillectomy, uh, my voice got worse. I got a virus and I got sicker and sicker. And by the time I got rid of the virus, I didn't have much of a voice. It would come and go. Sometimes it would almost be normal. But most of the time it was never normal. Doctor, what is that called? It's called the strangled voice spasmodic dysphonia. And, and what it, causes it? They're talking in the lower throat. My take on it is that <clears throat> it's misuse and abuse. The medical community is saying it's an unknown cause, and they look to medical or neurological cause. And I'm reporting cures of this condition for over 25 years <clears throat> okay. by direct voice rehabilitation. It's a different approach. She's such a beautiful woman, and mm. she sounds like a very old woman. Yeah, when I spoke, spoke with her by phone, when she called... You thought you were going to talk to somebody who's what? 120. 120. <laughs> that yeah. must be very embarrassing. I would think so. How did you find the doctor? Well, I went through 34 years of searching. Uh, I tried absolutely everything. I went to every doctor in It's like I'm talking to a different person. You are? Oh, yeah. You are. Oh, that's so scary. <laughs> so you tried everything. I'm uh -huh. sorry. And as a uh, last resort, I had tried botulism four times. And after I had the Botox treatments, my voice got worse. Uh, it got so bad that I was only able to whisper. Uh-huh. And I thought, what else? I have no recourse. And they wanted me to come back for additional Botox injections to adjust the dosage. But they'd already adjusted it three times. And it just got worse. So I decided to go with the Maverick over here, Dr. Cooper. <laughs> and I thought, what else do I have to lose? 34 years, and I had nothing to lose. She uh, is so pretty that she was in beauty pageants, but you didn't, you didn't have to speak very much, did you? Oh, yeah, I just walked on stage, and they said, hey, she looks good. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Cooper is the author of Stop Committing Voice Suicide and Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. And he says he can change anyone's voice. What do you want to ask him? Oh, I don't want to ask him anything. I'm just saying that uh, after four weeks, I I'm, my personality is back. I had become withdrawn, reclusive. I had gone to psychiatrists, acupuncturists every kind of doctor you could think of and all of a sudden when I got my voice back it's like hey the old girl's back look out
The most common voice problem is a tired voice, a misused voice, it fatigues. But she had no voice. I told her when she called me that I believe I can help her come in. And she tried everything. Her speech therapist wasn't able to help her. She heard me at a medical conference, and she referred her in. How long did it take me to find your real voice? Well, it took uh, my real voice he picked up in about oh, five seconds. Uh, <laughs> really? I have somebody God. for you. Can you... Uh, some, we have somebody who would like to change her life. Her name is Kelly. Do you mm -hmm. think you could help her? If Kelly wants to change, I believe I can help almost everyone. Ah, okay. The individual has to want to change if they find that the voice is rewarding for them. And I think she wants... All right, we're back in studio, and we're listening to a remarkable change of voice, as you've heard. So that was Sylvia, and that uh, was about 11 years ago. She had four Botox shots, and she prayed to get off the Botox shots because it was not helping her. And my point is the Botox voice is, as is now being told you, that it's iffy, uncertain, is that? Uh, right, he, he said he doesn't, he wouldn't know if it worked on me or not. But right. um, it did the first time, but it gives you a very weak voice. You have, you have no means to yell ever with a Botox. They're paralyzing your vocal cords, that's right, what they're doing. Right, right. Botox is bo for botulinum and tox for toxin. Right. In its undiluted form, in its natural form, it's probably the deadliest poison in the world. And they make it a very positive experience, Botox. Right. Um, that's interesting. They used Botox, folks, for stuttering. Uh, it was a big go for a while, and then it faded off the screen and disappeared from the radar screen because the stuttering uh, people who got the Botox didn't find it rewarding, apparently. Uh, drug companies are looking to extend their, their market, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's why they're in business. But the problem is that the medical community and the drug companies are making your condition, spasmodic dysphonia, into a hopeless condition, into an incurable condition, into a, an area where they're saying you should have Botox for life four to ten times a year, that's each and every saying. year for life. They tell you that? Yes, that's what I was told. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But after nine Rest. Botox shots... It wasn't working. It wasn't working. I was living in fear of, of um, the next Botox shot. I had no quality to my life. Mm -hmm. I was petrified. Do you feel you're getting better by what I'm telling you to do compared yes. to where you came in? Oh, yes. This is what you came in with. I've had nine Botox shots. Yes. When you talk on the phone, you're almost in incomprehensible. Right. I know that. Right. I hate the phone. Right. Um, I felt very isolated. Mm -hmm. um, this is a road to get my voice back. Mm. You've been here for a week. Right. Do you feel comfortable with the progress you've made? Yes. Mm -hmm. I initially was, I heard my voice. Mm -hmm. You did that very quickly. Mm -hmm. But um, now it's taking work. Right. It, there's no magic pill. No. It's work. This is not a magic wand. No. You no. have to change a bad habit. Oh, very bad habit. Did you get into the bad habit gradually or suddenly? Oh, gradually. I didn't even know I was doing it. And um, now I've caught myself breathing wrong. What do you mean you're breathing wrong? You're oh. reversing your breathing, I should Yes, I, you. I was backwards. Right. Um, I'd be choking my throat, strangling it, tightening all those muscles, and pushing my stomach up out with no air support, mm -hmm. trying to talk. You know you have a voice, don't you? Oh, yeah, I hear it, yes. You hear it when you laugh. I hear it when I laugh. Your, your laugh is your voice, I Right, and when I cry. And when you cry. Right. You're using the wrong area to talk from. You're talking from the lower throat. I know. Now, the medical community says that the condition is a dystonia. It's a neurological problem. They're mis misunderstanding. It's not a neurological problem. It can't be. They say it's a rare disease. It can't be because I report ongoing cures of this condition and I cannot cure a neurological problem. 
naturally. I cannot cure a rare disease, naturally, which I do. I'm saying that you have a wrong voice that you're using and you're squeezing from the lower throat. Right. And you're creating the very symptoms that the doctors are missing. The symptoms are reverse breathing, and they're saying that the breathing is reversed because you have a dystonia or a neurological problem or a rare disease. And I'm saying, no, that's not my experience. You're breathing reversed, called ass backwards, if I may say so, because it's a bad habit and you don't understand how to breathe normally. The strangled voice creates that terrible breathing problem. They're saying it's caused by a dystonia. Which one do you believe? <laughs> I love that laugh. Which one do you believe? It's, um, I misused my voice. I did it wrong, and I'm trying to unlearn a bad habit. Mm -hmm. Do you feel it's a bad habit, or do you feel it's a, a gene-related problem? Oh, a, bad habit. It's not a dystonia? No. It's not a neurological problem? No. It's not uh, a psychiatric problem? No. Did anybody ever tell you when you had your nine Botox shots, there's an alternative to Botox? No. How did you find me? Um, my lovely sister-in-law happened to have dinner mm -hmm. next to a gentleman who had SD, and he told her about you and um, about Scott, um, a gentleman who, Scott Adams, who mm -hmm. creates Dilbert. Mm -hmm. So, um... I did a little research online, mm -hmm. found you, read your book. Did you read Scott Adams' blog on what he said about me? It's life-changing experience. Right, yes, and yes. He has a voice he can talk with. He had five Botox shots. His, his experience is that two worked, two didn't, the other one iffy and so forth. So it wasn't working for him. The whole point I'm making is the Botox voice can leave you uh, in a very uh, questionable position. If it works for you, that's fine. I have a book called Curing Hopeless Voices. It's on my website. You can download it free, free, the whole book. It's called Curing Hopeless Voices, the st uh, Strangled Voice, Spasmodic Dysphonia, an alternative to Botox. Now, the people who do Botox are not happy with me <laughs> because I'm reporting cures and they're saying there are no cures and they guarantee there are no cures as does the medical community and my field, the American Speech Language Hearing Association, and an organization that's funded by Allegan, the maker of Botox, the National Spasmodic Dysphonic Association, all guaranteed there are no cures. So I give hope, and they say there is no hope. They give you a death sentence. Which one do you like? I want my, I want my voice back, and there's hope. There is hope. Thank yes. you for joining with me. Thank you, Mary. O Thank O'Donnell. you. Bye-bye. Thank you.